In the last few decades, scientists have found so many different ways to study the Sun, be it through observations with various telescopes or through the study of various sunquakes, the science known as helioseismology, we've actually learned so much about this beautiful object, the object worshipped by various cultures for many millennia. And I mean, for obvious reasons, it provides life to our planet. But even though we understand so much about the Sun today, we still don't understand pretty much just as much. There are still so many mysteries that we cannot answer, and even mysteries in regards to something that actually happened not so long ago. And so, how wonderful person, this is Anton. Today we're going to discuss the Sun once again, but specifically focus on a relatively recent study that actually discovered something else about a very unusual period that the Sun went through that we today refer to as the Maunder Minimum. Something that started in 1645 and finished in 1715 and basically represents an unusual long sunspot minimum when the sun was surprisingly extremely inactive. It essentially contained practically no sunspots at all, thus suggesting a period of extremely low activity. And that's of course because we know that today, solar activity directly correlates with the amount of sunspots we detect on the surface. Every time we see more sunspots, we also tend to detect a lot more solar emissions and a lot more different types of solar storms that are generally formed from various regions around various sunspots. And so leading up to what's known as the solar maximum, we normally detect a large amount of sunspots on the surface of the sun. Or at least that's the pattern from the last few hundreds of years. But the English astronomer Edward Maunder, along with other astronomers, discovered that years prior, a lot of the observations here were actually very different from anything we're seeing now. For example, between 1672 and 1699, only 50 sunspots were detected in total. Some years there were basically none, and some years there were just one or two. And that's in contrast to approximately 50,000 sunspots that we would be detecting in modern times in the same 30-year period. And naturally, the first explanation here is that, okay, maybe nobody was looking, nobody was counting, or they were counting but they were doing something wrong. But turned out that that's not the case. As a matter of fact, because of this guy. That's Giovanni Cassini. The same Cassini we have so many things named after. He was doing accurate observations before that and he was doing them during the Maunder period as well. He sort of reported the same. Almost no sunspots using some of the most advanced equipment at the time at the Paris Observatory. And so whatever was happening here was definitely happening with the sun. Intriguingly, during this time, during this grand solar minimum, something else unusual happened on the planet. It's known as the Little Ice Age and essentially represents a slight cooling on the planet that might have happened during this time as well. And though this was an intriguing discovery at first, eventually studies determined that this climatic cooling was primarily caused by volcanoes. And though the solar minimum might have played a role, it was not a very big role. And I guess even more importantly, studies focusing on these minima discover that this is far from the only one out there. For some reason, the sun seems to like doing this once in a while. At least 18 different periods were discovered in just the last 8,000 years by studying various samples from various ice cores that usually contain data from various isotopes of beryllium and carbon, allowing us to link solar activity to production of isotopes in the atmosphere. And so it looks like our sun actually spends at least a quarter of the time during these unusual inactive periods or these unusual minima. Or at least these were some of the initial implications from some of the studies. But it looks like now we're in some kind of a modern maximum period with much higher activity from the sun, something that also has very little explanation. Okay, quick and important side note that I'm sure is going to be mentioned in the comments. Even though there is a correlation between modern maximum and the increase in temperature on planet Earth, multiple studies established there's actually a kind of a reverse correlation between recent solar activity and the increases in temperature. In other words, no, the solar activity is not causing global warming. Just so that we're kind of clear on this. However, trying to figure out exactly what's happening to the sun, and of course where all of this is headed, is still really important. And so that's why so many scientists wanted to focus on these minima in order to basically then understand the maxima. And when it comes to Maunder minima, and specifically the data about these unusual events, a really intriguing study came out back in 2021 that essentially used various observations of aurora described by various ancient Korean astronomers and then directly linking all of this to observations from other astronomers and to solar activity. 
And the thing is, back in the days, Korean kings demanded a very accurate daily report of various astronomical events in order to then use that to guide their decisions in state affairs, royal businesses, or even in personal life. So basically, by observing the stars, they wanted to figure out what to do next with their life. And so they had extremely accurate records of astronomical events, starting with 918 AD all the way to 1910. Basically, a millennium of observations. But for this particular study, scientists were mostly interested in aurora. And though it's kind of almost impossible to see aurora in Korea, sometimes it is possible. Mostly because of this unusual magnetic anomaly known as West Pacific Anomaly, an area extremely close to Korea that produces a slightly thinner magnetic field, thus resulting in slightly more magnetic activity and magnetic storms. Or in other words, this area sometimes produces aurora. At least one type of aurora that seems to be common here. A red aurora. Aurora that usually happen really high up in the atmosphere, 300 to 400 kilometers in altitude, where a very low concentration of oxygen results in oscillating atoms that then end up producing high frequency of light. And in this case, they basically then form red colors, visible very high up because they're also extremely far. Compared to other aurora, red aurora are kind of rare and are usually associated with much higher solar activity. And so sometimes they're visible here as well, and have been mentioned many times in various astronomical sections of daily chronicles by the royal astronomers. Here they actually call them red vapors, or vapors like the firelight, which would be very difficult to explain in any other way. And so by analyzing these chronicles, researchers behind the recent study were able to then calculate how often these aurora were also seen during the Maunder Minimum, with the resulting observations suggesting that it looks like the solar cycle might have been actually different back then. Even though the modern observations suggest that these aurora happen every 11 years, because the solar cycle today is 11 years long, the observational records of these aurora suggest that the cycles back then were only 8 years long. At least 8 years long on average. Potentially suggesting that not only is the sun able to increase and decrease its activity and enter various minima and maxima, it also seems to be able to change the length of its cycle as well, or at least enter certain periods, potentially anomalous periods, when the activity cycle decreases in time as well. But obviously why this happened is currently unknown. With the other discoveries also suggesting that none of the aurora around this time were in any way different or more chaotic, because the observations of those aurora present them in a more casual, more typical way. And so during the Maunder Minimum, aurora have been observed with a somewhat regular appearance, but during the different minimum, known as Dalton Minimum, that happened during the 1800s, even aurora changed as well. And I guess here the implication is that maybe the sun seems to do different things at different times and we still have so much to learn about it. But specifically, we need to learn more about what it currently is doing, because even though the solar activity was slightly decreasing over time in the last few years, it then suddenly entered an extremely active cycle that we have right now, much more active than the cycle scientists were predicting, and much more active than the previous two cycles. In other words, just like with so many other things when it comes to astronomy, and of course the sun, this field is still in its infancy and we still have so much to learn. But in this case, this particular study, or these studies, are super important. Because whatever is happening to the sun, or whatever happens in the future, is going to directly affect us in so many different ways. Technologically, in terms of our lifestyle, and for all we know, maybe also, through some other changes to the planet we live on. And so trying to figure out what's happening here, and learning more about the sun, is why all of this is kind of important. But this is just one of many discoveries made about the sun in just the last few months. You can find more studies and more discoveries in some of the links in the description. Anyway, once someone figures out what's happening, or what happened during the Maunder Minimum, and why the sun was acting so strange, we'll come back and talk more about this in some of the future videos. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who has learned about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.